Welcome to the Cool Tools Show. I'm Mark Frauenfelder, Editor-in-Chief of Cool Tools, a website of tool recommendations written by our readers. You can find us at cool-tools.org. I'm joined by my co-host, Kevin Kelly, founder of Cool Tools. Hey, Kevin. Hey, it's great to be here. In each episode of the Cool Tools Show, Kevin and I talk to a guest about some of his or her favorite uncommon and uncommonly good tools they think others should know about. Our guest this week is Rusty Blazenhoff. Rusty is a social artist who aims to bring surprise and delight to everything she does. She publishes an inbox zine, a term she coined, blogs for Boing Boing, and makes magic for Pee Wee Herman, Children's Fairyland, and Burning Man. Hey, Rusty, how are you? Hi, I'm good. good. Thrilled to be here. It's yeah, so good so to hear your voice you. again, and we are looking forward to the cool things that you were going to tell us about. Oh, yeah. So many Definitely. cool tools. It was yes. hard to pick. Just I know four. it's hard. You are, you are, yeah, you're just a, a font of novelty. And so, yeah, let's, uh, populating my family tree on ancestry.com. Tell us, tell us about this. I mean, there's a lot of ancestry websites and stuff, but tell us yeah. about this one. C- can I, can I start with a short personal story about it? Of course. How, how, I, how I found it Yeah. and how I got involved. Okay. So when I was about 12, um, I was estranged from my family. So most of my life, I've had almost no access to family history, which has left me floating a little bit. It's been difficult mm-hmm. um, kind of to know who I am, where I came from, like mm-hmm. a missing link almost, you know, like, sure. um, and, and, and that's really, in a way, how I became who I am, you know, mm-hmm. like an outsider looking for the tribe, right? Right. Um, so cut to 2015, many years later, um, a friend invited me um, to travel with her to to Italy. Mm -hmm. Um, I knew I had Italian roots. So I um, jokingly suggested we take a road trip to the little town where my great grandparents came from. It's not a tourist town. And she was totally game. (laughs) Uh Um, So I, I literally only knew their surname and the little town's name. Um, And so we rented a Fiat and headed there. Mm -hmm. Um, But long story short, and it is a really great story that I won't get into here, but um, I met a cousin. I met an Italian cousin. Um, I don't speak Italian, and he only spoke a little English, but Mm -hmm. he did let me know that I was the first American cousin to come back. And that kind of, that sold me. Uh-huh. <laughs> I was, so, I was, you know, I, there I was. Uh, so that started me in my journey, um, really, to get dual citizenship to Italy. And um, and I use Ancestry.com. I feel like it's just an ad. But I feel, I've been doing all my research on Ancestry.com. And building my family tree has just been a wild ride. Like, and not just my Italian side, you know, like my European side, too. Mm-hmm. Like learning, uh, you know, um, I come from Cape Cod and just learning that um, many of my family names are street names and that, you know, like my 11th great grandfather was the um, governor for life of Martha's Vineyard, you know. <laughs> really? Yeah. And it's fascinating. Like I'm, I'm related to all the presidents. And once you start looking at um, ancestry stuff, genealogy, you realize that if you come from a certain place, and I come from, you know, pilgrim area, Mm -hmm. um, that we're all so closely related. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) You know, like, (laughs) like, it's funny, right? And I have friends um, that I've been able to go, oh, we share the same, you know, 10th great grandfather or something you know, friends yeah. I've known for years or whatever. That's so cool. But, but Rusty, I'm interested, you, because of your work and th- doing this genealogy research, you were able to get a, an Italian citizenship? Oh, yeah, that's a whole nother thing. So I'm, I'm working on it. I'm, I've been working on it for almost six years. And um, I, I, the only thing that's holding me back is I'm not now able to get an appointment for two years because um, the Italian consulate is closed because of COVID. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so I can't even get an appointment. But it's taken me a long time, but um, I have all the pieces to get the dual citizenship. And, the, and those pieces are just proof of your ancestry. Yeah. So I had to prove that it was the male line mm. and be after a certain date, you know, before a certain date, after a certain how, date. How macho. 
<laughs> I know. Oh, exactly. uh, for sure. And what's what, what's crazy is, you know, if I were a dude and I got it and I married someone, they'd get Italian citizenship, but not the other way around. So wow. if I married, if I marry someone, they're not getting it. But my child would get it, can get it, and I can give my brother all the all the documents, and he can go for it, and his wife, and all his kids, and all future, all future, everybody can have it. That's really amazing and what a great thing to be like a european union citizen exactly i could work and live anywhere yeah Yeah. eu it opens up the world to you in such a huge way well congratulations that's so cool i should i should see whether that's true about ireland Mm. Yeah. It is, um, and I almost I almost qualify, but it turns out <laughs> my I, I looked at that years ago because I I know more about my Irish roots than anything, and it turns out that my grandmother went, was born in New York. They went back to they went back to Ireland and back and forth, and anyway, she was so she was born in New York. Mm. Ooh, but you should okay. definitely look. Well, I know my my grandparents were definitely born in the U.S., so that's. It depends on what the cutoff date is, but yeah, you yeah. gotta check it all out for sure. Wow, that's cool. So ancestry is the tool that you use for all this. Yes, and it's I, amazing. Okay, well that's really great, and that's a subscription of some sort, I would imagine at this point, right? It is, and it's pricey. Um, I don't. What's have, the cost? I don't have those costs in front of me, but okay, um, it's been worth it. Okay, it can build multiple ones. Sure. Um, a, a friend helps me out with that. And do, and do you, uh, Ancestry, I mean, uh, 23Me does the genetic stuff. Does Ancestry is also doing genetic? Um, they do. And I, as well? Does that I, help? You know, um, I did 23andMe years ago. And that between that and what I've done on my family tree, um, I've been able to find people and like it builds a profile, you know, it just starts connecting a lot of dots, um, you know, it, I found like um, someone in my grandmother's generation in Ireland who was the youngest of all the kids who's still alive. And he found me through 23andMe mm-hmm. and sent me pictures, you know? Wow. Yeah. Um, but Ancestry has its own, but it's newer and I haven't, I don't, I don't haven't used that one. Okay. All right. All right. Well, so um, that's a good one. Tell us about your next pick. Sure. Um, so earlier this year, I had um, doctor's orders to drink a lot more water, <laughs> <laughs> like a lot more, you guys, like um, three quarts a day, which is... Oh my God, that's a lot. Does, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like 96 ounces. So I was wow. drinking from glasses at home, but you know, I was just losing track and I didn't know how much I'd actually consume. So I just started looking for a good glass water bottle. Because, you know, I think water tastes better from glass anyway. Mm-hmm. And um, so I found this one, this 32 ounce one from Purify You. I didn't know anything about them before. Um, it really sold, <laughs> sold me that it was glow in the dark. Not all of them are glow in the dark. <laughs> but I love a good novelty. Yes, you do. Um, yeah. <laughs> so it's glow uh-huh. in the dark. And it's great. <laughs> um, but besides that, uh, you know... Um, <laughs> It has a, a mouthfeel. I don't know how else to describe it, you know, at the top. That's mm-hmm. soft. Like, it, it, it feels good in your mouth. Interesting. But, yeah. So, it's not gl- glass. It's something. It is glass. So, the but glass they've, has. They've done something to it where it's not sharp. Like, it's soft. It's got some kind of texture. Huh. Like, it's, Interesting. it's smoothed down. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. Yeah, it has right. a good mouthfeel. Good mouth feel. And then the, the, so the description of this would be that it's glass Mm -hmm. that has some kind of covering that's silicone covering. Okay. Mm -hmm. Silicone covering. The silicone covering is what glows in the dark. Yes. (laughs) And so if you wake up in the middle of the night and you need to find your bottle of water, it's glowing there and you can walk to it with your eyes half closed. Yes. Okay. Yes. Um, and like then, a smaller one for hiking. And it also has uh, graduated uh, volume measurements, graduated, like how much you're drinking. Yeah. So, you know, this one is 32 total. They're smaller ones. Um, uh-huh. So I just have to drink three of those a day and I'm done, <laughs> you know. Um, but on the ones that aren't glow in the dark, that you can actually see the measurements. You can't okay. see it on the on the sleeve. For, right, and they, okay. they tell you that. And it's on sale <laughs> because of that, I think. <laughs> all right, all right. Yeah, so yeah. it's glow in the dark drinking glasses on sale. What could be better? 
I what don't know. He, right, I mean, how is life getting better than that? <laughs> <laughs> um, well, and these are called Purify You, all right? Um, $20 on sale for the 32 – for the, the 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 large for the you know the the serious water drinker, um, <laughs> the smaller ones, yes. <laughs> <laughs> if you're just pretending to drink water, we have smaller <laughs> ones. But <laughs> okay, so um, that's good. Tell us another um, uh, another tool. Um, okay. Well, I know you've you've had this on before because mm-hmm. that's actually yeah. I, 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 that's actually how I found out about it. The Cricut right. Maker, the Cricut, which I, oh, I, yeah. I have one, which is really cool. But tell us about it. Okay. Uh, well, I I pronounced it cry cut for way too long. <laughs> yeah, me too. <laughs> me too. Like I didn't know. I thought it was cry cut up until now. It's yeah. Cricut. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> they have a Cricut logo. That's how I figured it out. Ah. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Uh, <laughs> Um, but it, it really, you know, I, I saw it on cool tools, but it really wasn't until a friend in real life demoed it for me that I was really sold. And that was just last year. Um, you know, describe it for those who don't know what it is. Okay. It's like a home die cutting machine, which doesn't really give the full scope of what it is, but you can, you, you take, um, art and you can either print it out and it cuts it for you um, or wood or fabric. There's different um, blades. I think I'm describing this. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So it's, it's, so it's like, it looks like a printer size machine, like mm-hmm. a you know, big laser printer, but there's knives in there. They're computer controlled and these little knives will cut the most yes. intricate yes. patterns that you can imagine, including um, which is often used for like text. So, like, if you mm-hmm. wanted to put, you know, I always wondered, like, on museum walls, you'd have these um, letters. And it's like, how yes. do they get these letters yeah. on the museum? Well, this is how they do it. <laughs> yeah. They cut it on vinyl that has some adhesive. And you're actually cutting out these little tiny letters exactly. Mm-hmm. And then they transfer it and they paste it on the wall. That's done with one of these machines. But they can do other things. Or a machine like it. You know, there's ones yeah. that aren't this brand. Yeah. But this this one is great for home like home use. Like I have so many ideas in my head at <laughs> any given day that I it's frustrating to not be able to get them out. Right? Yeah. Um, I really it really my friend showed me that like if I have an idea I can get into my hands within the hour. Which it you know, when you're a yeah, creative person, cool. it's like you know, you want it right there. <laughs> yeah, it's great. Um, so what kind I, of things have you used it for? Oh, I'll tell you. Yeah. Um, so I got it. I got it as an early Christmas gift to myself, and I immediately went into production. Um, uh, I made the official Blazenhoff Industries holiday card slash ornament, uh, mass produced. Quote. Um, it's. Uh, it made me feel very Andy Warhol. You know, I mm-hmm. used, um, it's my logo, which is like a fluff jar that I've changed to say Blazenhoff. And then um, I just printed out a ton of them. And it's sort of like. Um, you printed them out on like um, paper, vinyl? What, 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 paper. Okay. And then I made a background um, to, to paste it on, to glue it on. And then hung it, you know, from a string. But the the paper I used in the back, I also cut with the Cricut, and it was um, various vintage postcards and vinyl, old vinyl um, album covers, you know, mm, ones that cool. didn't have, did, you know, I went to Goodwill and they didn't have the records in them or whatever, mm-hmm. and so it became like this kind of weird, like what was going to show up when you know the bottle shit came out. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, and then, so I started, uh, you know, I sent them to f- friends and readers of my zine and I wanted to send them to something that felt personal. Mm-hmm. So like I had a postcard for my friend, um, Heather, and she had, has gone to the pyramids a couple times in her life. Well, I had a vintage postcard of the pyramids, So I cut it out so you could see the pyramid inside the logo. Um, I, I'll, I have a picture cool. I can show you. If- <laughs> If you'd like. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so that was the first thing I made. And then 
Uh, oh, I've made lots of things, stickers, etc. But uh, one of the coolest things I made, I learned that there are people who make templates that they sell on like Etsy. Um, so you can use through the Cricut. So there's a guy, I don't know where he is based, but he's on Etsy and he sells only box templates and they're only 89 cents each. So mm-hmm. they're in- instantly downloadable. You know, you can download them right away and mm. uh, completely scalable. So mm-hmm. I have a 1962 Fawn all mechanical cigarette vending machine. I've had it. I've had it for years, you guys. And I've wanted to put custom boxes in it with art or, you know, um, whatever. <laughs> I'm not even sure. Yeah. But custom cigarette boxes cost a lot because that's like you, you manufacture it, right? Yeah. So I bought this uh, cigarette box template from this guy and um, I made my own cigarette boxes. It, they're so cool. <laughs> that's that's amazing. Good. It's really cool. Cool. And so you made them out of cardboard, or so I no, I have I I use like some um, just to test. I did like a Trader Joe's Oreo box, mm-hmm. <laughs> and like the bubbly water box, and just whatever cereal boxes are great for this thing. Um, so I've done a lot of tests on cereal boxes and stuff like that. So um, I then I then I bought some fancier paper like you can get at Michaels, mm-hmm. that's a little thicker and it's printed. They come in like booklets, and um, that's what I've been making these boxes out of, and they're so cool. Cool. And see, so this I guy has that. templates for almost anything like that. Yeah, he. I mean, for anything you can think of, practically wow, wow. eighty nine cents. Eighty nine cents. You buy one template, and then you can just make as many as you want. Yeah, That's you've great. got it. You don't ever have to buy it again or anything. Yeah, I love it. Yep. Cool. Yep. Maybe you have a link to this. Uh, that that source would be really cool to have. Yeah, that. Um, I put a link in the document. Okay, great. Thank you. Yep. Um, so uh, the cry cut. Maker, no, no, cricket, cricket, cricket. <laughs> <laughs> um, yes, the cricket. Um, very versatile. Some people, like my friend Chris Anderson, the wired editor, said that of all his tools in his shop, that was sort of like what he recommended as the first purchase. Um, in terms of uh, doing things at home with kids, especially so. Yeah, like I, I, you know, I'll have an idea for a sticker, and like a one-up that I, I'm like, oh, this is going to make my friend laugh. Mm-hmm. I make it, <laughs> I send it in the mail, and they're like, where did you get this? <laughs> 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 like I had an idea of Calvin peeing on COVID-19. Uh-huh. Oh, that's, so there he was. <laughs> I love yeah, that. there you go. <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. Okay, really so... Good. um. Tell us about your fourth cool tool. Okay. Well, um, you know, I work at home and, I, and I've and i worked at home for a long time. Um, but until this year, until the pandemic, um, there were no Zoom meetings. <laughs> mm-hmm. I didn't have to attend Zoom meetings. And I don't like being in a lot of Zoom meetings. Like it's a Does lot anybody? I don't think so, which is why this next product is so wonderful. (laughs) Um, So, you know, I'm trying to find excuses to leave early can be a challenge. (laughs) Uh (laughs) So, um, you know, my friends at Archie McPhee, uh, you know, the novel, the great Mm -hmm. novelty company that's been around forever. Great Um, folks. uh, Such good people. Yeah. Um, they've devised a way to make my life easier and everyone else's <laughs> with these emergency sound makers. Like, um, oh, okay. I see. I can see where this is coming. <laughs> so I can see where it's going. I mean, I don't. I don't see where it's going. I mean, yes. Okay. Wait. 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 G- gentlemen, did you hear that? I think my kids need me. <laughs> oh, oh, your kids. <laughs> okay. Okay. Oh, oh no! Wait. Wait. Sorry, I mean my horse. <laughs> um, there's a Bigfoot, emergency Bigfoot. 
There's Merchants Wait, wait, let's hear, let's hear the Bigfoot. I don't know oh, if yeah. I'd recognize a Bigfoot. Well, for, would you like the howl, snort, roar, uh, or groan? <laughs> how about the groan? Groan, okay. Oh. Yeah. I wonder if that's an authentic Bigfoot sound. Well, I, I'm sure it is. <laughs> Absolutely. I mean, they, they wouldn't they wouldn't have a fake one, right? No, never. <laughs> Are you <Real> crazy? <laughs> <laughs> well, um, I mean, they have the unicorn sounds too, right? Yeah, I have a unicorn sound here somewhere, oh, but I don't gosh. have it in front of me. I have the cat. <laughs> you know, oh no, I have to go. I think my cat's in a fight. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta leave this meeting. Sorry, guys. I um, see. Do they have actually like kids playing in the screaming in the background? Because that was what what would be the most convincing. Oh well, sure. Um, they don't. I know that they're out there. And there's also one like you know, um, the doorbell rings. Oh, I hear the door. <laughs> <laughs> you know. <laughs> Uh-huh. That's great. Like, crying baby, you know. Um, uh-huh. I actually, you know, learned about. I mean, I knew about them, but you know already. But um, in the in the past few years, you know, um, a friend of mine would would do that. You know, he would be pressing the buttons on the phone, and I was like, oh my. <laughs> It's so good. Like he, he's like, I gotta That's go, really good, and yeah. it was just something stupid, you know. Uh-huh. And so now, you know, I was like, oh my gosh, I have to get the whole set for Marchie McPhee. Yeah, yeah. so That's cool. Really... Wow. Yeah. So we've gone through your toy tools and toys. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, tell us a little bit about your newsletter, Rusty's Electric Dreams. I mean, we have Substack now and everything, but you're like old school. You've been doing this for a long yeah. time. <laughs> On paper, is that right? Like a like a true zine, a zine? No, it's that... an in- inbox zine. But it's what's the inbox book? zine mean? It's an e-newsletter, <laughs> oh, okay. but, but cooler. <laughs> okay, cooler. our cooler <laughs> inbox zine, but cooler. Okay, um, so well, actually, I I don't have a picture in my head. Um, is it very graphic or? Um, so imagine an it, you know you get your typical e newsletter with some links. Uh huh. Well, this one has it's it's quirky, and um, I try to bring in like that old internet World Wide Web feel of like finding weird links and um, you know cool events. Like um, you know I've been in kind of the underground scene for a while, which is no longer underground, of course, but, um, you know, I was not as old school as Boing Boing, but I was blogging before it was called that. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, so, you know, I went to Burning Man starting in 1995. And so I just know a lot of things about the weird world. Yeah. Okay. So I I try to put it all together. It used to be weekly. Now it's every other week. And um, I have fans from all over, you know, readers from all over. Sometimes I think I'm going to stop. And now I'm like almost eight years in and people are like, don't stop. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And um, I just a couple of weeks ago, I creative mornings called me one of the most uh, anticipated newsletters. They called the zine that. Cool. Yeah, I believe it. Yeah. And so is it uh is it a paid Substack newsletter? Is it No, and I and I I am thinking about moving to Substack. It's just been a it's just a process to move. I'm in Mailchimp right now cuz uh-huh. you know it didn't exist that uh, Substack didn't exist before. Um but I, I am thinking about it. Um I do have some folks who uh throw some money my way, but I haven't um done a whole lot of effort to monetize it. You know, I have full-time work and clients and um, it's a lot of fun for me, and I get to help out um, the world I enjoy, you know, mm-hmm. uh-huh. pushing good ideas. Okay, yeah. so um, it's sort of, um, it's arty mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. a bit of art, and li- and I guess in sensibility similar to the old-fashioned zine, but it's uh, mm-hmm. a newsletter style. Yeah. You don't have a stamp yeah. Yeah. on it. It's really good. It's it's really good. I hey, you know, actually, it. I was just thinking of something. Um, remember the old zine days? We used to do these like swaps. Like, I'll send you my zine, you send me mm-hmm. yours. Yeah, totally. I wonder. I wonder if you could have that with newsletters. <laughs> the only yeah, way to get my newsletter is to send me your newsletter. That's a great idea. Yeah, you could do that, Kevin. 
with <laughs> Substack, you could. I mean, I do do Super some fun. some swaps with people. And yeah, like, but what if that was the only way you could get it? That's a great idea. And you actually. had to like their other. Yeah. You, you had to like the other one or something. That's a really I don't cool know. Idea, um, actually, you get a lot of mail. Well. <laughs> But if it was if it was selective, it would be kind of cool yeah. because the only way you could get the zine would be to produce something like you like it yourself. Yeah, mm-hmm. and that might be a very tight community of oh, people just sure. sharing stuff, and then you couldn't buy it for money. Right. You know, that's how I got started. I I used to have a paper zine, you know, in, in, back in the day, and um, we we would bring it around to different burning early burning man events and give it away and people would give us stickers and you know it was a lot of fun and like we'd meet um have zine meetings you know like we get yeah. together mm-hmm. you know? actually mm-hmm. the more i think about that if i did a newsletter that's what i would do it, it's not worth i don't know if i'd do it for a i don't think i'd do it for a sub i'd only do it if you sent me a really cool newsletter that i liked and that could only be gotten by by swapping, I think I think like that, that. I think yeah, that would fun. be kind of cool. That's a cool idea. Part part of what I do with the zine is that um, you know I try to make it a community, and I try to you know we have mail art swaps and stuff like that, and uh, based around a theme, and that that of course gives me an, you know an excuse to use the cricket, um, and it's a it's just a lot of fun. I mean, it's a lot of fun for me to find. That, you know that there's other people out there like me the only the only thing that's a bummer is like it's just me pushing out a lot you know right i don't yeah. always it's not always as fun to be uh, the pusher outer <laughs> do you ever miss uh do you ever miss it uh like a week or do you are you really good about getting it out every single so it's every other week now <clears throat> okay. because you know i have more paid right. work paid mm-hmm. work but um this is issue 300 coming up this wow, week. Wow, that's amazing! So cool, you're right? you're gonna you're gonna get into Beeple territory. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you can say what you want about his art, but I have to say, anybody who does something every day for five thousand days, mm-hmm. yeah, deserves sure. some reward because that is yeah. an amazing achievement. Yeah, yeah, so cool. I don't disagree. Yeah, I don't disagree. Um, well, cool. So this this um, inbox zine yes. is called Rusty's Electric Dreams. Okay. After my favorite movie, which was Electric Dreams. That inspired uh-huh. me. Okay. <laughs> nice. Fantastic. Yep. So cool. Yeah. Well, thank you so much. We uh, really enjoyed this as usual. It was really fun to catch up. Yes. Thank yeah. you. Um, Thanks so much, Rusty. No problem. I'm going to, I'm going to, leave you here with this purring oh you have to go oh boy <laughs> my cat needs me you guys <laughs> i love it all righty <laughs> okay thank you okay thank you thanks <laughs> hey everybody it's mark from the cool tools podcast i want to thank you for being a listener to cool tools and i also would like to let you know about our patreon page if you would like to support the Cool Tools Show, as well as our video channel, the website, and all the newsletters that we do, you can go to patreon.com slash cool tools, that's just one word, cool tools, and pledge any amount you want. You could even pledge a dollar a month. Every little bit helps. We have editors, we pay for transcribing costs, we pay our reviewers. Every bit of money that you contribute goes towards supporting the show. I'd like to give a shout out to our supporters of the Cool Tools podcast. This week, I'd like to thank the following Patreon supporters. Bill Schuler, Bob Kay, Ryan Pelly, Carl D. Patterson, Chad Cosby, Chris Wheland, Chris Weirstook, Craig Tooker, Dan O'Brien, Dean Putney, Danelle Cunningham, Evan Barker, Graham Medlin, Hans Riesbeck, Helen Hegedus, Jerry Kearns, Jim Lesko, Jim Spofford, John Pollock, John Burdenbaugh, Keith O, Ken Altman, Les Howard, Lauren Bast, Mock Nerd, Malton Make, Mark Goebel, Matt Gromes, Michael Douglas, Michael Jones, and Michael Pecorini. Thanks to all of you for supporting the Cool Tools Show. We really appreciate it. Mm-hmm.